I remember my first time getting scammed. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was working with this artist at the time, managing him, and he was getting ready to put out a small EP. I want to say it was maybe like nine or 10 songs, something, something pretty short. But it was pretty cool because at least as long as I've been working with him, this was going to be his first project release. So, you know, of course we were pretty excited about it. So we started doing some research around resources we would need to put it out properly and, you know, start building out like a marketing plan for it and a release plan for it. And one of the big things that he wanted to have was press. This was back in 2017, maybe. So this was around a time where press was still super important. You know, not nearly as <laughs> unimportant as it may have become today, but you know, at this time it was still pretty important. A lot of people still wanted to get press and wanted to be on blogs, understandably. So after doing some more research, somehow we came across this publicist that I honestly can't even remember how we found this guy, which maybe should have been the first red flag, but we came across this guy that sold us on his services as a publicist. So he started giving us all this all this good ear candy about how he could get us on like Ear Milk and Complex and PMP and all these blogs that at the time were like the blogs to be on. Now, we pay him the money and the first week of the campaign goes by and the artist gets on like one of those blogs. I think like Ear Milk maybe. So, so far so good. We're like, oh yeah, it's about to be up. You know what I'm saying? He got the first one that's legit. Boom, bam, bing. Another week goes by. And he doesn't respond to our emails. We don't see anything go up. I'm like, okay, you know, I come from the press world, so I'm like, I get it. It doesn't always move as, move as fast. I know what the process looks like. Two weeks go by, we don't hear from him. Email him again, still don't hear from him. Three weeks goes by, and at this point, we're pretty mad about it. So we send out, I think we like threatened to refund the money on PayPal or a threat in the suit. We, we, some kind of threat got put out there. And so he finally responds back. He gives us this soft story about how his grandfather had been in the hospital and all these bad things were going on. And you know, at, at that point, like we, we, we kind of didn't care because so much time had been buying. My, my big thing was just the communication, right? So we kind of didn't care, but somehow or another, we end up letting it go. And long story short, we never hear from him again. And just like that, I'm out of like, I don't know, maybe like six or $7,000. So I learned a lot from that lesson. And it's honestly been one of the only times that I think I've ever been scammed in the music industry. And I have people tell me like, that's pretty lucky of me. But like I said, I learned a lot from that situation and it's definitely made me a lot more skeptical of certain things. Uh, and especially with how I move with certain other music industry professionals today or people who are trying to sell me their services and things that they do. So what I wanna talk about in this video is some best practices, some mindsets, some things you need to keep in the back of your brain so that you can possibly save yourself from getting scammed as much as possible let's get into it it's the mat work what's going on my name is Corey, music marketing co-founder country brand agency and today i want to talk to you about some practices some mindsets some things you need to keep in your heart that could possibly save you from getting scammed one day or you know keep you from getting scammed as much as possible because the music industry is a grimy game there are a lot of scammers out there who are looking to take advantage of young artists you know and, and i just want to protect you guys man. i don't want to see y'all go out like me and come out of pocket you know saying six seven k and have to eat ramen noodles and sleep on the floor for months after that, you know? So before we get into all that, come and follow me on TikTok and Instagram. Links will be in the description below. Come talk to me, come engage with me, come give me some video ideas, all that cool stuff. Also, make sure you check out the new Relaunch Brand Man Network. It's growing by the day. It's turning into this real dope community. And me and Sean are putting a lot of game today, you know what I'm saying? If I gotta say so myself, I would say we like a 12 out of 10 right now, you know? Like, we, we ain't missed yet. So check it out. Link is in the description below if you're interested in learning pretty much all the different marketing things that we talk about and are interested in all the new marketing content that we're going to be putting out, then yeah, check it out, link in the description. Now with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing that I want to talk about actually is why you as an artist is probably going to get scammed or at least the archetype of the type of artists that I see get scammed the most or are getting scammed the most. And their artist is usually an artist that's super impatient. You know, a lot of the times they're new, they're greener to the industry. They maybe don't have a lot of resources uh, with that being people in the music industry who they can get advice from, or, you know, maybe even know about too many resources like us, you know what I'm saying, who can give them advice in the music industry. And they're just, they're, they're super impatient and they're green, right? So because they're green, they don't really know how to move correctly in the industry. They don't know what are the signs of things to look for that point to a person being a red flag. And they don't know what to expect as far as like results, right? So an easily scammable person to me is someone they can, be, they can be sold these insane results for very little money and the person falls for it because they're impatient and they don't know any better. So they really do think that- Yo, $500 can't get me into rat caviar. And if I get into rat caviar, I'm gonna become the next Drake. You know, or they really do believe that, yo. This record label executive is gonna fly me out to New York to have dinner with me and listen to my project, even though he's streaming on Spotify for only $150. 
once again because they don't have context of what do these people really look for or, or how do they really move and then again how much do certain things cost i also think the easily scammable person is the one that's too trustworthy of everyone that come across now i'm all about giving people the benefit of the doubt and i do believe that if you're too hyper skeptical in the industry you'll burn a lot of bridges and you won't move forward because you'll just be too mistrusting of everything you'll never really make any moves so i do think there is a line where you can become too uh too not trusting enough i don't know what i'm trying to say but i have met some people who are the exact opposite they give everyone the benefit of the doubt they believe in the good of everyone and they want to give everybody a chance to the point to where they see that see them win those people are usually easily taken advantage of because people who are trying to scam you do not care that you're a good person they recognize that in you they take advantage of that so i think that in order to put yourself in a position where you're getting scammed as, as least as possible you have to be a fine balance between skeptical and you know unsure of everything to the point of where you're asking questions and you're asking the right questions but then you also have to take in enough information and resources that you're not super gullible about everything and you have these realistic expectations of how certain things should go so remember those three things those three things to me make the easily scammable artists they're green they don't really know shit they're new to the industry no connections no real information they don't know how things move they're impatient so because they're impatient they believe things that tell them that they're going to get them from point a to z in matters of days and weeks and stuff like that just just pure just pure impatience you know and then third they can be too trusting and they can be you know too willing <laughs> to see what everyone has to offer and what they can do for them. Those are the three characteristics of the easily scammable artist to me. But Cobra, you said this video was gonna be about how I cannot get scammed. Why not? Why I'm gonna get scammed, bro? Like, what's up? What can I do to protect myself if I am one of those things or two of those things or God forbid, three of those things? And like, like I said, I just want you to understand that first because that leads me into the next couple of points that I want to make. These are the things that you have to do or once again, try to really ingrain in yourself to keep yourself from getting scammed as much as possible. The first thing is learn how to manage your expectations. Because like I said earlier, the, one of the people that are the easiest scammable people are the people that don't know what to expect of anything. They don't have realistic expectations of their results. So once again, they believe that for $500, they can get into rap caviar and shoot to the top of the industry because they have never been around a Spotify rep that's talked about how the rap caviar playlist works or you know done any research on the playlisting world to see how it works. So. You have to learn how to manage your expectations. And the way that you learn to manage your expectations is by gathering in as much in information about the music industry as possible. So I'm talking about podcasts, I'm talking about books. I mean, you guys are making the first step by watching this channel, you know what I'm saying? So you're, you're headed in the right direction, but really take in as much information as you can because as much as I love me and Sean, like we don't know everything, you know? Like we don't know everything about every nook of the industry. And that's how people are able to spot something that they can get you, get you about. So really learn as much as you can about the music industry so that even if it's something that you haven't been able to necessarily put your hand on yourself or do yourself as an artist you have enough baseline understanding to go like that doesn't that doesn't sound right you know like every article and interview i've ever read by every major label you know representative that i trust is almost as the complete opposite of this thing that you're telling me i can do for 150 dollars. you know so that literally just comes with information information and i would say experience like as you get more resources for yourself as an artist and as more opportunities open up for you to try things out, you'll start to do things that will let you know, hey, this doesn't sound right. Like, not just because I heard it from someone else, but because I've been through this thing and this doesn't feel right. That's why I kicked myself so much about getting scammed by the publicist back in the day because I come from the publicity world. I knew that certain things weren't moving the way that I was used to it moving when I worked with my, my, my mentor, the publicist that I worked for. Like, he wasn't giving us updates to certain points like he said he would, or. You know, like the, the, even the Ilmer article came kind of too fast in my opinion, or like, you know, I, I hate to say it, but even the artists that I was working with at the time, like I knew deep down that certain opportunities that the publishers was talking about didn't make sense for the artists at the time, but you know, it happened and we got duped, you know? But that's why I usually feel so bad about this because like I should have known better, you know, like I came from that world. So intake as much information as you can, that will allow you to learn what really works and how things really go in the industry which will help you to manage your expectations because one of the one of the easiest ways for scammers to catch their prey is to promise a magic bullet right this magic bullet that in the artist's brains believes that if it gets shot everything will change overnight and all their dreams will come true and to me the magic bullet only exists to people who don't have realistic expectations of how certain things should go 
The next thing that you can do to protect yourself from getting scammed as much as possible is do your research and ask around about the people that you're trying to do business with. Like the music industry for the most part is a very small place. You know, like if you know anyone who has even a sliver of a foot in the music industry, nine times out of 10, they know someone that knows someone, maybe that knows someone that knows about the person that you're trying to work with. If not, things like LinkedIn and corporate websites exist and like you know super best case scenario you find a forum of music artists who talk about things like that you know which i you know we do have inside the brand man network you know just want to throw it out there but you want to put yourself in a position to be able to ask around as much as possible so i know if you're someone that doesn't have as, as many industry resources it, it can be hard you know but i don't know the internet's a vast place like if someone has scammed someone before trust and believe that person is out there willing to give someone enough information to stop them from being scammed as well most business people today have to build some type of personal brand on the internet in order to do business. And if those people have wronged people in before, then those people are probably vocal in their comments, you know, if they're not being blocked. Or you can probably find certain people that are following that person and ask them questions like, hey, yo, I see that you, you follow this guy or that y'all, you know, do X, Y, Z together. Like, you know, I hate to be that guy, but what's up? Like, how, how is he as a person? He's telling me that he can do X, Y, Z for me. And like I said, like most artists, most professionals who have been scammed by someone before will gladly help someone else to not get scammed if they can, if they're able to give them the information. So do your research, ask around. The industry is a very small place. The internet is a very small place, especially when you're talking about music industry services and things that can be done. And a little bit of Googles and a little bit of research, you know, may feel tedious in the moment, but you'll thank yourself later when you were willing to drop that 3K budget and you learn that, you know, this guy is consistent with not returning emails once the, the invoice has been cleared. The third thing that you can do to protect yourself is to ask the professional for references and credentials. Now, most people in the industry will have some type of case study list built around the services that they do. They have some referrals if you ask. Like, everyone doesn't offer referrals and I get it. Like, sometimes people don't want to, like, refer you to people in their professional network. So it's more common to, to see case studies and be like, hey, can I see some examples of your work? Can you point me to an artist that you've gotten great enough results around that you're comfortable with that I can go one, check them out. And then, you know, going back to point number two, ask them some questions if I feel like I need to ask them some questions. So ask for references, ask for credentials, and ask for case studies. Um, I say ask for credentials because if you're dealing with someone on a corporate level, you know, like one of the most popular scams I see is the, the age old trick of, hey, there's an A&R in XYZ city from XYZ label that wants to talk to you and fly you out. And you know, people that work at labels are just people with jobs. Like these are people in corporate positions trying to make their bag by doing the thing that they like to do. The thing about people in corporate positions is nine times out of 10, those people have to have a LinkedIn profile. And then they usually have like some type of corporate email or you know something on the corporate page where you can actually look it up and, and see if it exists and if, it, and if it, it's real, you know? So if they're someone that is claiming to be from some type of super professional background like a label major publishing company something like that like literally ask them for credentials like ask them like hey prove to me that you are who you are show me something show me a work badge email me from your work email well, that to me is the easiest one like email me from a legit work email you know or point me to your link dm me from your your professional linkedin profile like you know so i can look and go oh snap all these resources and people commenting and all this stuff are, are real people that you possibly know you know so ask for credentials ask for case studies and ask for referrals in situations as they make sense and you know use that to take in as much information as possible about that person so you can make your decision moving forward and the last thing i would say you know like this, this just kind of came to mind like never pay someone up front unless you already trust them and, and, and know them pretty well you know like most professionals will offer payment plans where it may be let's say like a down payment up front and then once they get a certain amount of work set up or a certain amount of stuff set up then you can pay the remaining amount I say, unless you like super trust the person that came refer to you from somebody you trust, always take the option to split it up. So that way, if worst case scenario, they, they get you for that. At least you made it out, you know what I'm saying? Unscathed with all of your budget. And then two, you can use that whole process of how they're maneuvering during that point to decide if you want to continue moving forward or take your money back. And the other thing I would say, just while I'm in the mind of that, these, these just keep coming to me, is pay through a trusted payment source. Pay through something like a PayPal services, a payment or you know pay it through your credit card from a bank something that if shit hits the fan you can at least file a dispute and get your money back um so people that ask you to send them payment through things like cash app and Venmo and and western union like these untraceable sources or these sources that don't have a dispute method they're more than likely trying to scam you because no legit business is going to be like yo pay me through the friends and family pay, payment uh, plan on paypal no we have invoices pay through the invoice Send me that bank transfer, 
pay me through services so I can track it when tax time rolls around and, and shit looks legit. You know, so like, there are gonna be, those are red flags that let you know as well if someone is trying to scam you. Hey, can you send me this payment as a friends and family only option? No, absolutely not. Hey, can you wish my, my bank is down for some reason? Can you wish some union, union media to deposit? You know, sorry for the inconvenience. I know when your bank is fixed and, and they figure it out, I'll be here, you know? So that's another thing I wanna throw out there before, before jumping out of that topic. Um, yeah, don't send people money through ways that you don't trust and believe in that aren't secure. Just, just, just don't do it. So there it is, guys. Those are my tips for how you can prevent yourself from being scammed as a music artist as best as possible. And trust me, I get it. There are some elite top level scammers out there who know all the things I talked about and they make sure to set themselves up in a way that, you know, still makes them look super believable. So I said to say, like, I'm not 100% guaranteeing that you won't be scammed, but you know, if I can knock that percentage down 10, 20, 30%, and I feel like I did a pretty good job, you know what I'm saying? And this video was actually inspired because one of my good friends got an email from a fake label pretending to be QC, trying to get him on the phone to do a, like a $200 consultation with their a &R. Like some very clearly obvious scam bullshit that was like, hey, I should make a video about how not to be scammed. That friend actually also thinks that we should make a video responding to that scam email, pretending to be artists and go through the whole process to see what they would do. So. You know, I, I've been thinking about it. If that's something that you guys are interested in, drop in the comment section below. You know, I'm, we may start putting that together. I don't know if I want to waste the time doing it if y'all aren't going to watch the video, you know what I'm saying? So, so let me know. Other than that, I'd be curious to hear what are some things that you do to help yourself not get scammed? What are some red flags you've seen? How have you been scammed and what did you learn from that situation? Drop those stories in the comment section below. I love to hear about it myself, you know, so we can all learn together. And then you never know when you may be helping some artist that is on the verge of being exactly where you are. You know, like I said, like I know most artists, if you guys could, you would love to help another artist not get scammed as much as possible. So drop those in the comment section below. Other than that, if you feel like you learned anything today, please like and share this video. Hit those post notifications as well as I wouldn't want you guys to miss anything. Once again, my name is Corey and I'll see y'all next time.